I'm back. Round three. And this time, I think we're going to tackle reflections. Reflections, reflections, reflections. This is the one that I keep getting. How do you do your reflections? And I don't necessarily think that my way is the best way, uh, the fastest way, the easiest way, the best results. But um, as you guys know, I use reflections in a lot of my images and my designs. And so over time, I've kind of developed a way that works for me. And since uh, a lot of people seem to want to know, I'm going to share with you uh, the way that I do it. Um, and those of you who have kind of followed along uh, with my work or looked at my Facebook page or my website, you know that I use a lot of reflections. A few examples here, this Wichita Christian Cheer, this is very recent. Same thing with Wichita Christian Volleyball, we've got our reflections in here. Uh, big pasture. A lot of my double image um, posters, like this big pasture, this Ziva one. Um, there's a there's a elite baseball one that's pretty popular, um, and then of course this one. Um, and this one reflections are, in my opinion, is what makes this image. Uh, without these reflections, it would be pretty. I don't know. It just wouldn't wouldn't pop quite like it does. And this happens to be the one that we're going to use uh, for the purpose of this video or this demonstration, this uh, Rojo Neon. This is the panoramic one. Um, and honestly, I went back and I looked at this and I was, I was kind of a little sloppy with some of these uh, reflections, but unless you really get in there and, and uh, look at it with a magnifying glass, you, it doesn't really catch your eye but um, let's go ahead and get started uh, I've kind of changed this uh, these layers up a little bit just for the purpose of the, the video here we're gonna go ahead and turn off this image here and just turn on uh, one of the player images which is Rachel she's right there in the middle now this is an example of, of a easy one you'll notice her feet are straight forward One's not closer to the camera than the other. This is the best that it gets as far as um, you know, not having to do a lot of work to get it to look right. So we'll go through this and then we'll, uh, we'll tackle one that's not so easy after we get through with this one. But starting off with just the basics. Um, you've got your player image layer. You can see over here I have it, Rachel, now probably tell looking at this or if you're familiar this is a smart object and I use smart objects for lots of reasons but uh, you can always go back and undo things that you do it doesn't damage the the file or the image and if I want a little more a little less of something you can always go back and and use the smart filters to adjust that so um, I suggest that if you are not using a smart object that you right click and convert to smart object and moving on uh, first step in the process is to duplicate the layer we need a layer to use for the reflection the way I do that I'm using a Mac I hold option and I click and drag down and it duplicates it for me Regardless of whether you're on Mac or PC, there's several ways to do it. You can always just right click, and I think it's in here. Yeah, duplicate layer. There's probably, a, I'm sure there's a keyboard shortcut. I'm pretty bad about not using those. Uh, something I need to work on. But, anyways, we've got our reflection layer. I use the bottom one for the reflection. I'm going to retitle that, rename it reflection, just to help us keep track. So, we've got two layers. We've got the player image, we've got the reflection layer. Um, you probably know a lot of these steps already, just even if you've never done it, you know the next thing we need to do. Um, but I'm going to go up to uh, edit, transform, and I'm going to flip this thing vertically. So now she's upside down. So I'm going to click on this little corner here and drag it down, and we're going to try to get these feet to line up. Okay. Now, I kind of, 
you know, I go beyond the point of where they're touching. You know, it's just barely touching right there. I kind of, I'm using my arrow key. I kind of move them up and get them touched a little bit more. All right, so uh, if everything's just perfect and you're on a simple image like this, everything just lines up perfect. Um, this is the point where I would go ahead and add some blur. So I'm going to go up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now this, it just depends on, you know, what you think looks right. Um, usually somewhere between maybe 12 and 15, 10 and 15, Let's go down to nine. Let's see this nine and a half. Eh, that could even work. Just depends on how you blurry you want it. I like them pretty blurry, so I'll probably go up maybe around. Yeah, I think that'll work. I'm at 14.8. There's no magic number. Somewhere in there. So we'll click OK. Starting to look a little better. A little more like a reflection, but still not quite. Ooh, let's come back. Let's walk them tablet. It's a little touchy. Okay, so the next step on this reflection layer, we need to kind of fade it out. We want it stronger where it meets the feet and fade out into the background as we get down here close to the knee or maybe even halfway between the knee and the socks here. Um, so we're going to add this layer mask. I'm going to go down here and you can see this little icon here. Most of you probably already know that much. So now we've got our layer mask added. There's a few ways you can do this, but in my opinion, rather than trying to use a soft brush and paint it out, surefire way is to use the gradient tool. So with the gradient tool, you want to make sure you're working with uh, white to black, black to white. Make sure that you're on your layer mask. And what I do is I kind of start a little bit halfway up the foot. And I hold down shift and I click and I drag straight down to around the knee where it will fade out completely. Oh, well, I did that backwards. So let's undo that. Let's click this little reverse. See this reverse? It flips white to black. I should have known that. So let's try it again. Hold down shift, click, drag down around the knee. So you might have to play with this a little bit. But let's see, maybe a little bit lower. I guess higher. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now, if you zoom back, that looks pretty decent. You can go as far as to reduce the opacity because they're typically not as bold as your actual image. And come down around 75. And um, what you might also consider doing, this is an optional step, but if you want to take the time, uh, I like to add a little bit of shadow right in here underneath the feet. And to do that, what I do is I add a blank layer in between the reflection. And I got two in between the reflection and the uh, top image. And I'll go over here and get a soft black brush. So I've got soft as can be. Bring the opacity down, I don't know, around 20%. So let's make it a little bigger. And just kind of paint in a little bit, darken it up. Nothing too crazy. There we go. Seems to help a little bit. So that's the easy one. Let's move on and uh, take a look at this other, other one here. It's not going to be quite as easy. Let's turn Rachel off and look at Kelsey. Yeah, so you'll notice Kelsey... She's standing diagonally. One foot is way further back than the other. So what are we going to do? Well, let's 
walk through it and see what we'll do differently on this one. I've got a few, few tricks up my sleeve. So um, let's convert her to a smart object. And let's duplicate. And actually, I got ahead of myself. Let's uh, rasterize this reflection layer. We'll turn into a smart object here in a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and flip it. So here's what you're going to notice when I try to line these up. It's just not going to work out. You get problems all over the place. One, this huge gap. That's the obvious. But even over here, you'll notice how there's a big gap. We're going to have to do some things to fix that. So here's the way that I do it. I bring this layer back up and try to get everything on your canvas or your frame here. And what I want to do is I want to separate the two legs. And this is why it can't be a smart object because I'm going to come over to the lasso tool. Well, I've got to apply that. I'm going to use my lasso tool. And what I want to do with this reflection layer selected is kind of just real loosely draw a line. I want to try to go right in between there. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to blur it and fade it out. All right, so I've got this leg selected. If I come up here to this move tool, I can click on this corner. I can drag this foot and position it how I want it. Right about there. Now I need to do the same thing. I'm going to deselect, but I need to do the same thing with the rest of it. So, real loose. Just draw a circle around it. And this, that way, whenever I move it, it's only moving this and it's not moving the other part of the leg. So we're going to move that down. And already looking a whole lot better. So we'll hit that check mark. Let's deselect. Now, still not quite right. So that was one of the keys I was talking about, splitting it so that you can line it up right. The other is a thing called Puppet Warp. So if you come up here to Edit, now I'm working on this Reflections layer. Come up here to Edit, Puppet Warp. It looks pretty crazy. If you haven't used it first time, I was like, what? But anyways, with Puppet Warp, you'll see all this crazy spiderweb looking business here, but basically with your mouse, you can click in areas and it creates anchor points and the anchor points they serve a few purposes one is to hold down the image in areas you want it to stay because I'm going to use this to stretch it out so I'm going to drop some anchors to keep it from shifting but the last ones are in the corner of the feet so you'll see I'll put one here and here, I want it to stay there, but right here I'm going to put one because I want to click and drag it to meet. Now we got a big gap here, so if I put another anchor there, I can do the same thing. And it just depends on how close you want it to be. It's going to look a little weird at first. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And I didn't make it a smart object. So let's edit, step back. Let's go back and now we can make it a smart object. Getting out of myself. Now let's do it again. This time a little quicker. Puppet warp. You gotta hit a check mark in this. Oh wait. I know what I need to do. Oh, that warp, not perspective warp. Okay, so let's drop these anchors to hold our legs in place. Just a couple. Okay. All right, so those are the ones to hold it in place. Now the ones to move. 
right here in the corner. Click and drag it. A little bit much, but not bad enough. Put one in the middle. Bring that up. Okay. One there. It's going to look a little weird at first. Okay. Especially this one. Because I'm really going to stretch it. Looks a little strange. We'll make it look better. I might have got a little too happy with the anchor points right there. That looks a little stretchy. You can click in the middle and stretch back. Some Sometimes that'll help. Balance it out. All right. Maybe one there. Bring that up. I'm going to call that good. That looks a little crazy. But once we add our blur and everything else, it should be all right. So next step, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Keep it the same. Hit OK. Already looking better. Remember our layer mask. Gradient tool. We are on white to black, not black to white this time. So this one's a little could be a little trickier because this starts way up here. But let's start right here and just click and drag down until we need. Cool. And maybe oh bring that opacity down. Not sensitive a little bit. Last step, I'm going to add a layer in between there. Go back to that soft brush. It's black. It's 20%. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Okay. And just kind of paint in a little bit. Just a little bit under the edge. Come up here. There you go. There you have it. That's how I do it. Now you can take bits and pieces from that. It depends on how much of a hurry you're in, how detailed you want to be. Obviously, you can spend a lot of time on this, and I know a lot of you are not into spending a lot of time on anything, so you can kind of speed it up. It just depends on how how good you want it to look or you know what you can live with and what you can't. But I certainly hope that helps everybody. That's how I do it. If you guys know a better way or something I can do differently, by all means, let me know. Uh, I'm always up for learning new things, but that is the way that I uh, have developed over the years, and it works pretty good for me. So there you go. Thanks again for watching this one, and uh, I don't know. We'll see what we, uh, what we come up with next. Thanks again.